Hey, Science in Pajamas Returns. All right, so today we're gonna have probably what's gonna be a shorter video. We're just gonna talk a little bit about PCR. Now we introduced this idea at the end of our notes for my genetics class. And what PCR stands for is polymerase chain reaction. And it was actually discovered or invented in 1983 by uh, Carrie Mullis. You don't really have to know too much about the history. Again, we just briefly mentioned it. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what it is, why it's important. And it is a way, a process to make a whole bunch of copies of a selected part of the DNA. It's similar to DNA replication that normally occurs in the nucleus. But instead of replicating the whole DNA, it's only going to represent this sorry, replicate this particular part. And it's gonna do it over and over and over until you have not just millions, but even billions of copies. I mean, we're talking about multiple, multiple millions, all the way up to multiple, multiple billions. So we're gonna have lots and lots of copies of this particular gene. Now, the way that it works is there's three main steps. First, we have to denature the DNA because we want the DNA to unwind itself and open up. And what that involves is typically some kind of heat. So heating up the equipment, the solution, so that the DNA falls apart. Like we mentioned, this is why if a fever gets really, really, really high, you should go to the emergency room because heat will naturally denature or cause our DNA and our proteins to fall apart and not work. So we're going to apply a lot of heat in order to denature the DNA. And then we're going to do something called annealing of the primer. So what this is, it's a cool down. We're going to add very, very specific primers that are going to attach to very, very specific portions of the DNA, the portions that we want to replicate. And by cooling it down, it allows the primers to actually attach to the correct spot, so that we can move on to step three, which is, it's sometimes called extension. <coughs> the primers extend and then we're able to synthesize the section of the DNA using heat stable DNA polymerase. Now, the reason why it has to be heat stable is because like we already said, when we heated up the solution in order to denature the DNA, our polymerase will not work at that temperature. So when you have heat stable DNA polymerase, it means that it is a version of that enzyme that will work in these hotter than normal conditions. It was discovered, I believe, the version that they used was discovered in, I wanna say it was like a um, hot spring type environment. And because it was part of an extremophile, which is you know, bacteria that really do well in certain other environments that most other life cannot, it was able to work well in the different higher temperatures than normal. So that's why it works very well for this. And it's just going to replicate that one section, the gene or whatever else we're looking at. And when you do PCR, you're going to do this again and 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 again. You're going to do it so many times. I mean, you're not even going to have just one million copies. That is way too little. You're going to have, like I said, multiple millions, even billions. You're going to have so many copies of this. And the reason why we do this is a lot of times for research. We can also use it for medical production or specifically of certain medicines. We take this gene and we can maybe the gene to make human insulin and then we can make a lot of copies of it and then we can use that to create the insulin that, or, well, we put in some bacteria, we use it to create the insulin that is what we give to people with diabetes. We can use it to, if we want to check for a genetic disorder in a prenatal test, you're not going to get a whole lot of cells oftentimes when you want to or when you get a sample via either chorionic villi sampling or um, amniocentesis. So what they might do is take the samples that they have, use special primers that should attach where 
um, candidate genes are located, and then they can make a whole bunch of the genes that are there. And then from there, from then they can look at which genes are produced and see, okay, is a baby, does it have the gene that could lead to Tay-Sachs or Huntington's or something like that? So there's any number of reasons. They've done this for forensics to get certain sequences to be able to identify people. We mentioned medicine, genetic testing. There's a whole world of different ways you can use this. And like I said, also just research. A lot of research is going on to find out what genes are actually doing. What is their actual function? Take it out of the living, the full set of DNA, the living system, make a bunch of copies, and then maybe put it into a bacteria, see what happens. I mean, that's kind of how we got the glowing cats and glowing goldfish. But again, just wanted to review the basics of it so that you remember it for if slash when we ever get back to school and take the test. So again, shorter video, I know, but at least you got to see me. Hopefully, maybe soon I will be able to see you guys. So until then, cheers. Yeah, it's my favorite mug, look at that. Yeah, my little alien. All right, anyways, to all of you, stay healthy, stay safe, and until next time, take care.